is going to chair the meeting. Mandy, you can introduce yourself. I come in to you. <laughs> oh, oh, right. I also work on Lua, too. So I, I work on Lua Jin and work for building networking applications. So yeah. that's it. OK, so please take a seat. Yeah. yeah, why don't we have everybody sit down and then we can finish introduction. Yeah, so yes. take seats. Embeddable languages, you hear about Lua, you hear about Gaia, and you'll hear about much else. 
Well, I think one of the part of the small word is that uh, compared to Python, for example, you can't embed Python, but uh, when you install Python, you are uh, install a huge standard library, which is not something that exists in Go. So uh, it makes Go very easy to embed, so you don't have to ship a lot of file or Python file or raw file to what you would be to have a standard library. Your everything is embed. So what I mean, that's one of the pros is it's very small, it's easy to embed, and the ones are not nothing. But it, it really depends on what you want, want, to, want to do in your program and what you are embedding for the first place. And I think that's what finds more long way. So I, I'm not sure or it's with guys nowadays, guys, who's like a huge standard library or not at all. Yeah, that's a pretty significant size standard library, right? And like it's kind of interesting because we, we talked about this earlier this morning, there was discussion about how Guile kind of started as a language to be embedded, right? And now it's kind of shifting in a different direction. Um, which is in, uh, interesting to me. I, uh, maybe one of you would like to discuss about where Guile had been historically, as opposed to maybe where it's going as in terms of being an embedded versus a not embedded language. Is that something either of you would like to pick up? Um, I don't, I mean, so I'm not a programmer, so I don't know what Guile is. But on the one side, with my experience with Lua, it is a tangible thing that is small. Like it's nice. I type make and the thing builds in less than a minute and it's got everything together and it's a small binary and it feels very nice to me and that's a way in which I appreciate it. At the same time on the on the scheme side, small language has always been, I've always thought of it as a, a barrier in some way because there's a mystique around scheme that is just this small thing and people have been like, you know, well this is a small language and if you make any change to it or if you add a particular facility for data types or if you make this or that, then it's, it's no longer a small language, but in reality, I'm just trying to write some programs to get some stuff done. So I, I think, I mean, to an extent, it's a, it's a narrative art, artifact, you know, it's like, oh, we are a small language and, and we can't actually extend our domain in these, these various ways. And, well, I, my guile is a product of our, our labor and our interests, and I think it's been extending in a, in a kind of large way, actually, you know, like, towards a more capable language. Well, it remains small in some ways, but I don't think we can fairly call it that now. Maybe we have a thought. Yeah, I think back, back to your question, I think guy back in the day, in the 1.8 days, which was several years ago, was very much um, oriented towards being embedded pretty much in the same way you would embed, maybe not Google, but rather Python. It was it's still a shared library that you would enter to, uh, to the thing against. But uh, we've shifted from that to something which is a regular language where you can actually write much more code in it because it's faster and because it, it has a larger standard library as well. And so, yeah, it's, you can still use it for embedding, but we hope to make it such that you can write directly your application in it and only resort to see uh, as a last resort. Well, I, I think the embeddable part does not exclude the part of being used as a general language. Well, you can't take a huge language and embed it, but if you have a small language that you, it's used for emb uh, embedding, if you have a nice packet management, if you have community making modules, you can pack things and do general use programming. And um, this is what I'm trying to, to spend more time doing and, and, and Lua and um, yeah, and I think it can go great with that but um, Lua has a barrier as well so we're saying that um, that has this um, scheme uh, mystique that acts like a barrier and, and Lua has this other side which is the opposite side which is being seen as a toy language so they both can repel users in completely different ways so you, we need to figure out how to get around this and back up this different group of yeah, I'm not, I'm not, yeah, I think I think at some point the misconceptions of it due to it being like a tiny language made it seem like you know to some people that it might, might be like I think to, I think uh, yeah I think like toy language is a bit too strong right? but uh, yeah, well, I've, I've heard that you heard that <laughs> uh, no so. Uh, yeah, but what can you say? Like, even if you get like a 250k tarball, right? It's not gonna. It, it can't be a real language yeah. inside. It's free. <laughs> <laughs> it's free. I mean, think of more. It's free. Yeah, yeah. It's free and it's 250k. Come on, come, come on. It's, it's gotta be like. Not so yeah. so. <laughs> but but the thing is that uh, it's interesting to hear like that. The vibe I'm getting from you guys is that like 
as the question of the future of the small language is that the, like, the future of dial is that not to become such a small language anymore and become like a normal language. And, 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 but from the from the vibe that I get, uh, both from the both from the Lua team, the developers of the language, and the Lua, and the community, is that the future of Lua, on the other hand, in, in that way we will divert, because the future of Lua is to remain small. Because there's a lot of people like working on like IoT, like really embedded devices and things like that. And the core developers, the designers of the language, my advisor, they are, they are insistent in re keeping the, the Lua core really small. You know, the, the things that Julian complained about, you know, that there was like lots of stuff missing, they will keep remain missing from the language core. You know? And so the future that, I don't know, I don't know if the future that's gonna be, but the future that I like to see and, and the same thing that Tim was talking about, the future that we would like to see was that, that the Lua language remains small, but that the ecosystem around it would grow over time. You know? so, so that, uh, because more and more we see people doing exactly the same as Julian said. So instead of embedding Lua, they start by embedding Lua and they like it, work with it, embed it in some project. And, and then eventually they want to write like the whole application is possible in Lua because they like it. And if there are enough modules around, you know, and if it's easy, if it's just like one command away to get like, okay, so I need Pango now. Okay, Lorox install Pango. You know, now I need XCB, Lorox install XCB. If, if it's just one command away, then it doesn't matter if it came along with your, you know, because the, the Python package is like 70 megabytes, the, tar, the source code tarball. You know, so it comes with the whole kitchen sink. Right? But if the kitchen sink is like one command away, it doesn't matter if it can, if it came with the original tarball or not. You know, so I guess that's the future that we would like to see move on. Which you should probably have good choice because most companies like, uh, from what I heard in Python, are very don't want to put anything in the standard library anymore. There's a lot of things missing in the standard library because I do have things like for HTTP, but not the protocol. So and pushing a barrier and you know limits where what you do or not. Uh, when you community grows, it becomes a big problem uh, because you, you don't. I mean, you say yes, yes at the beginning because you have a very few contribution. So the more you get, the bigger your community grows, and the more you will have, and you will have a problem to say no. I don't. We stop there. It's why it's it's I mean, why is there this and not this in this one library? It's a real So having a policy from the beginning say nothing. Um, you can say the really like I said, it's just one common. Is I think it's a very good policy if you can keep it to last for. Um, yeah, the, the the policy of the, the another barrier that say that what what comes in and what comes what doesn't in the Lua standard library is a very strict one that's related to portability because the the source code of the the core Lua uh, is ANSI C it's like it's it's all written in C eighty nine so it, it, if it's something from the standard C library that's only in C ninety nine they will not put it in the language. You know, if it's like POSIX stuff, they're not gonna put it in the language. They they made one exception, the, the Lua core source, source code has one exception that breaks this rule, which is loading dynamic modules. Because there's no like DOL or, or uh, SO modules loading in the language. Because when they, and they made this one exception, because with this one exception, you can load everything else you need. So, uh, so we said we we're gonna take a, a well, I said <laughs> that we we're gonna switch back and forth. So do we have a community? Or do you have an audience member who wants to ask a question? Yes, okay. Yes. Uh, speaking about small languages in terms of embedding, what would you say are uh, language features that are required for a language to be successful and useful? I can take this in the sense of the features which I find successful and useful in my embedding environment, and that is the FFI in Luigit. Wait, wait, can you define FFI? Because not everybody knows what that is. It's uh, the ability to call out to C functions to do um, uh, there's a syscall library as well. So FFI stands for foreign function interface, right. in case you're not aware. Yeah. Uh, which enables me to you know, punch down, to write the whole application in Lua and just punch down to C when I need to instead of writing the core in C and then you know, calling out to Lua. Uh, the bit operations and then you know, being fast, right? having a good language implementation. Anyway. So back to asking questions again from yeah, one question. Oh, okay, sure, we'll ask. Uh, the, the most scary thing for me uh, with respect to small languages, but I'm attracted to small languages, but is of course, uh, if I, uh, if my program depends on a small language, like, uh, uh, won't it go away? 
So uh, what's the support? Will it still be there? Or will I have to step in to um, support the language? So I'm guessing you're taking small as in the small community, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes, <laughs> I mean, that's a risk. Well, Lou has been around doing fine for over 20 years, and it hasn't gone away yet. Both Lou and Guy Yeah, well, they were created about right? the same time, so 1992, 1993, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, speaking for me, uh, there was a time that uh, uh, Guy was quite a scary thing to depend on for us. It's, it's an issue. It's yeah. looking good now, but... Um, it's looking better, but yeah. But still not a great <laughs> situation in that regard. So, so one thing that's been brought up a couple of times already, and I'd like to hit it, is like the a, a pain point in many ways for common languages. And pain points are great to bring up on panels. Uh, so um, uh, we mentioned there was multiple times that like the core of the language should maybe be small. How much should you put in your standard library? And then how much should be in external libraries? And of course, the moment that you start tossing the external libraries thing into the mix, and the reason why Python in many ways had so much stuff in a standard library for ages is because of the challenge of having like package management, right? So what what are your views on package management? Should languages be taking this on? Like languages do your package management or like each language should have its own or should it be, you know, more like up to the distribution or what's what's your views? I imagine that at least one person will have some strong opinions. I do have strong opinions on that. <laughs> Uh, well, the, the, the thing is, is that I, I have already been in both sides of the, the package management di dilemma. Because before being involved with Google Rocks, I was involved with Global Linux, which is Linux distribution. So I, I've, I've been like the upstream guy and the downstream guy, you know, and, and, and have been them like, and have like fought fights in both sides. Uh, so the thing is, Conceptually, I would agree that package management is an operation, it's an operating system problem. You know, so let's make up OS packages and and be done with it. That will be a lot more consistent, and I don't know, life would be wonderful. But I've I've, I've come I've come to, to believe that that's just not feasible uh, for one reason: that scale uh, and uh, basically scale scale and portability. Because if you if you look at the actual package managers, you know, I've, I've, I've done research on this. I've, I've, I'm going to kind of recite part part of a paper and uh, a book. And the, the thing is that if you look at the numbers of, of packages, like Node.js, you know, if you look at npm, they have like over a hundred thousand packages. Are are they like at a million already? No, but I, I just, 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 just but it's something ridiculous of the kind. No, because no. because. Because because uh, I'm quoting numbers for like only two years ago. Because the, yes yes because because the curve goes like this it's like it, it looks exponential it's crazy, right? And 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 around the time, uh, uh, npm had a hundred thousand. Like Ruby Gems had like uh, sixty thousand. You know, so, so you can guess where it is now, or you can look it up. You know, there's like there's a website like modulecounts.com. <laughs> if you just if don't go, someone wants to check out on their phone and then look at the updated numbers, the, the numbers are crazy. You know the, the amount of modules, and you, and then you compare that to the number of Debian packages that there are. You know and, and you know all the QA that goes through to be a Debian developer and a maintainer and maintain packages and things like that. You know we're never gonna have that. We we simply cannot make Debian packages for every module of every language. And we, and, and then most, many of those, a lot of those modules, they also work on Windows, and they also work on the Mac. You know, and you know, so 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 either you do this work like it's not like doing three times because then you have to do for any for every Linux distro, right? So so it's a lot of replicated work. So so, so language-based uh, package managers are, are a way of factoring this complexity, you know, in, in per language slices instead of doing like per OS because first doing it per OS. Just won't cut it for, for an, because of an argument of scale. So, so. I'd like to make a comment on what remains in the core and what is the server. Because I think no matter how huge the core is, you're still going to have stuff missing. So you're still going to have to 
need certain modules if we're going to use the language as a general use language. If we're going to use it, doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Like, it might matter, but like the general use is most certainly going to need external modules, no matter what size the core already is. And obviously, if you have community uh, contributed modules, you have issues of which module do I pick? So in Lula, we don't have classes, right? So we have modules that are lower rocks for getting that. So if you want classes, you go lower rocks install, and then you have to pick one of the dozens of libraries because everyone decides to write their own class library. And then we don't know which class, uh, which module do, do we pick? Do we pick this one, that one? Which, which module is the best model. We can't know, but the thing is, if by any chance this was in the core, we couldn't guarantee it was the best model either. This is not happening in other languages. No, I guess in, I guess in Python there's a situation where yeah. there's like an HTTP module that's the one in the standard library, and the official recommendation is don't use it. Yeah, <laughs> get, 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 get the other one from the package manager. People use external models but, to, yeah. to replace models of the core the whole time already. So. Yeah, so, so I think, I mean, I have a sort of a strong opinion, maybe, I don't know. Uh, but I, I, I also get the two viewpoints, because as a guy developer, I think it's, I mean, language package managers are just awesome, because they allow your users to, to publish and use packages on whatever operating system they're using. And that's just great. Uh, but then as a distro person, I think, you know, per language package managers are just crap. <laughs> so I'm a bit schizophrenic, but I mean it, it doesn't compose well if you have to, to manage applications written in, in a bunch of languages or if you have several applications using different languages and you have to use several package managers, NPM, um, Forget about that. If if you have to use you know, like ten package managers, which is not uncommon I think these days. Uh, that's really that's really painful for you as a, as a user, and you cannot really, you know, you have different tools. You cannot really say my configuration contains exactly these packages because each package manager cares only about its own very little real, and so that's painful. So what we've been trying to do in Geeks so far, but again, there's obviously a scalability issue, is to semi-automatically import as many packages as we could. That is for important packages from PyPy, from Fran, CPAN, and so on. And uh, yeah, it, it works pretty well so far, but obviously we, we cannot just import everything. That's not going to work. Um, but also a related problem is uh, if you look at traditional distros like Ledger, um, there's a lot of editorial work, so to speak. So they make sure that everything is always consistent and always works perfectly. Because if you look at things like NPM, for instance, you cannot reach the one million package number without you know, just yeah. letting people push it. In. The vast majority of packages on NPM are proprietary because they don't have any license whatsoever, for example. Yeah, that, that's an example. So uh, as a user, I really like the, the editorial work which is done by, by these tools like they do. So. Okay, let's uh, go to another user. I'm going to go at the back.
doing good work on a language is quite sufficient. You know, like one person can make a huge difference in any particular field, and you don't have to worry about what other people are doing. You just have to keep at it with relative constancy. So it's not it's not a source of anxiety, I feel. You know, but I, I do like to steal from other languages, especially racket. <laughs> well, and, and Mike Paul did like uh, speaking about like the huge impact of one person. Mike Paul did beat the, the Google team that made V8 and on the benchmarks, and he was a single person. Yeah. So, so there's that. Okay, I'm. What we're going to we've got five minutes left. Actually, less than that. So we're going to accept one more question from the audience. And then we're going to end up switching off with one, and it's got to be short. And then I'm going to have one uh, uh, one last close up thing. Uh, Mine isn't short. Okay, it's <laughs> short. It's short. He's got a short question. You in the back. Um, so, Scheme uh, R7 report has this dual track. So there's like the large language and the small language. I was wondering if how you how you feel about that, and whether that protects it as a small language or endangers the small language or. You know, what, what, are your, what are your thoughts? I'm not really interested in R7. <laughs> that, that's the short answer. And, and the long answer is much longer. So, <laughs> okay. I don't know. Yeah, it's the same for me. I think it's a, probably a mistake to try to distinguish small language and big language. Okay, so we're going to get to the wrap up part. Uh, I'm going to ask that each one of you, uh, we're going to start at the end and work our way this way. And then Julian's going to have a complexity since I think you're in both. Uh, you've been done some stuff in both. Um, what, uh, so you get to do one for each. Uh, but uh, I want each one of you to speak about the other language and say something that you wish that you that you admire about the other language's stuff. <laughs> so um, I, I always think this is an interesting exercise. So something that the Lua developers think that the Giles that people have in, uh, well, and then something the Giles developers think the Lua people have well. All right. <laughs> I guess the thought interested and, and yeah, that is actually quite nice. It looks pretty. Yeah. <laughs> there are many things I admire about Lua, and Lua Rocks is one of them. Well, one thing I'm going to say about uh, the Gal community is the Gigs project because, uh, well, uh, Coming from my governance background, uh, has a lot of commonalities with Nix OS and uh, with Nix and Nix OS. So uh, you know, it's it's really great to see like people like giving like a fresh of breath air, you know, and, and, a, and a new wave of energy into this idea. Like I'm, I'm really excited to see that. I've never actually written Lua code, but what I do admire is Lua.js and the implementation itself, which I've read about and is really impressive. What I do like about Lua is that the code size is pretty small and I, I feel like I almost can understand it. So I feel smart when I read the Lua code. So I can understand the programming language. And what I do like about Gary is that I don't understand anything about how it works when I read blog posts from Andy. It's like, wow, I wish I could understand that. Why is <laughs> Uh, so I think that wraps up our panel. Uh, thanks.